Hello, I'm Mark Pollitt, and welcome to Understanding Forensic Images. In digital forensics, it is of extreme importance to preserve the integrity of the original evidence. And as a result, the best practice for dealing with stored electronic evidence is to create a duplicate of the original, store and preserve the original, and only work on a duplicate. The process that uh, is used to do this is very commonly and colloquially known as imaging. Now this is uh, very uh, confusing for lots of folks, uh, as we will see in a minute, uh, both in terms of the terminology but in terms of uh, the other things that are images uh, that we deal with, uh, like pictures. But for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to be talking about the way in which we store uh, a duplicate of original evidence. And the terminology forensic image um, is uh, commonly used. It's probably not the best descriptor. Um, a lot of folks uh, now use the term forensic duplicate, which is actually a, a much better term. Us old folks uh, have a hard time uh, forcing ourselves to uh, utilize this terminology, but it's probably a good one. You'll also hear it called bitstream copy uh, because, uh, as we'll see in a minute, what you're really doing is you're taking a stream of the data and copying that stream. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's a terminology that's kind of fallen a little bit in, in disuse, but you will see it from time to time, so I think it's important for uh, new examiners to at least be aware of the term. But regardless of what it's called, the purpose of it is to convert a physical drive or uh, the logical area of a drive, and, and we discussed in a previous uh, video on partitions the difference between physical and logical media, but uh, an image can be taken of a physical drive or a logical drive, and it takes the data from that physical or logical drive to and, and stores it in the form of a file. Now these files obviously can be very, very large, and there are a number of different ways of dealing with this data. The earliest and most common form of image or forensic duplicate was to create a raw or sometimes known as flat file. And what that basically meant was that you just took each byte off the drive one byte at a time and you stored it one after another on the uh, storage media. You basically took a string and, uh, and copied it over uh, uh, one character at a time. And obviously if you do that the file will be exactly the same size as the original media. So if you have a hundred megabyte hard drive, you will have a hundred megabyte flat or raw uh, forensic image. Obviously if you start talking about two and three terabyte drives, you will have two or three terabytes in the file. A lot of operating systems have difficulty in reading files that large. Uh, and a good deal of the space on any drive may be uh, empty or not utilized. And so uh, a number of folks uh, relatively early on in digital forensics came up with a way to compress the data on uh, the forensic copy or image without losing any of the data. Normally when we do something like zip a file, we actually lose some of the data on there. But that obviously is not a good thing in terms of digital forensics. So what we use is a non-lossy uh, file compression scheme. They also recognize that when you have a large original file and then a large image file, that uh, there's a greater chance that one or more of those bits or bytes on the image file will become corrupted. And so we want to make sure that if one part becomes corrupted that we don't lose the entire drive. So they've come up with a scheme to not only compress the information but to do intermediate checks on the content uh, 
so that if part of it goes bad you can still use the remainder. Another thing that you'll commonly see with proprietary files, uh, proprietary image files, uh, are uh, the ability to uh, write that image to multiple pieces of media. Initially it was floppies and it was CDs and it was DVDs, uh, but now it can even be individual hard drives uh, so that you could use, uh, for instance, uh, uh, six uh, 500 gig hard drives to image one th uh, three terabyte drive. Um, the good news is that these proprietary and compressed file formats uh, allow us a lot more flexibility in conducting these um, uh, forensic uh, tests. Um, the biggest problem is doing verification that the data matches the original. If we have a flat file, in other words a file that's identical to the content of the hard drive, then we can do a hash uh, of the original drive and a hash of the flat file and they should be identical. And so you can very easily verify that the image is identical to the original drive. But if you're going to be uh, compressing a file uh, or spreading it across multiple pieces of media, you can't directly make that comparison. So you have to use the tool itself to verify the integrity of the image. And that has a little bit of a, of a problem in that you don't have an outside verification mechanism. It's important to think about what you're really copying. We're used to copying files. And one would think that if you copied all the files and you've got all the data. Well, that's not exactly true for a couple of reasons. We talked a little bit in the partition video about how there, there can be space within a physical partition that's not part of a logical drive, but can still be used to hide data. Within the logical drive, there's space that isn't allocated that can be used to hide data. But there's also space within the files that can be used to hide data. And I'll show you what I mean in this slide. You see a directory listing of a, of a group of uh, directories there. Uh, they could easily be files as well. And uh, each of the lines of the directory tells us, okay, here's a file and you go to the file uh, location on the hard drive and you store the data. And in this case we're going to use the blue, uh, light blue, to indicate the data that you're trying to store. Well, the computer has to reserve a certain amount of space to store each file. And it reserves the same amount of, of space and we call it an allocation unit. And in this case, the allocation unit is much larger than the size of the data, which is not uncommon. And so you have new data that you're writing, which is the data in blue, that's the data that you want. But unbeknownst to you, within that allocation unit is data that's left over from a previous file. And since that data is not overwritten, that data is still there and available if you know how to look for it, if you have the right tools to look for it. And that's referred to as slack. There's actually several kinds of slack. Uh, this particular slack uh, is, uh, is known as file slack and is the most common. There's another form of slack called RAM slack that's uh, very rare anymore. Uh, but is actually generated when the file is saved and it is data that is taken from the computer's memory. And that's called a RAM slack. But most of the slack we'll see in modern file systems uh, will uh, be uh, of the file slack variant, which is data that resides on the drive uh, that has not been overwritten but is allocated. So in, in seeing that, if you're going to save a file, if you're going to copy a file, what exactly is the computer copying? Well, it depends. Now, this varies a little bit from operating system to an operating system, but typically the metadata of the file, which is the file created, accessed, uh, or modified times, will normally change when you copy a file. Not all operating systems do this, but most do. Uh, 
So the metadata, which is one of the three parts of the uh, file, and that was the uh, black command prompt that you saw. You saw the, the file name and date uh, and time. Well, that changes when you make a file copy. The data itself within the file stays the same. So if you have a Word document in there, you won't lose any part of the Word document. The Word document will be copied over in file copy. But what will not be copied is the file slack. And the reason for that is when it copies over, it only copies from the beginning of the file to the end of the file, and it doesn't care what's uh, after that. So a file copy only takes the data within the file, modifies the metadata, and leaves the slack behind. Obviously, for forensic purposes, that's not a particularly good approach. Now, when we do a bit image copy, it's a little different. When we're doing a forensic copy or a bit image copy, what we're really doing is copying all of that. We're not copying using the file system itself. We're going at a much lower level and we're reading each of the allocation areas byte by byte by byte and merely reporting the value that is in there. So we're not actually using the directory tree, the file structure, the folders, or the file metadata to find the files. We're copying the bits that make up the file structure and make up the individual files. One way to look at it is to think about it, one of the old LP vinyl records. Uh, for those of you that uh, uh, don't remember them, uh, in the old days we had these vinyl records where you took the needle, which was on an arm, and you started at the outside of the disc, and as the disc spun around it would read the data uh, in the grooves and make the, the music, but it would slowly work its way toward the center because it was a giant spiral. So you spiraled into the center of the disk from the outside. And so you would be able to store lots and lots of music, in the case of the LP records, about 45 minutes worth of music, on one side. And it did it by creating a giant spiral. Well, we do a similar thing, although it's concentric circles, not a spiral, uh, when we store data on a hard drive. And we use basically the same metaphor uh, even when it's not a rotating drive, we have something like a solid state drive or a, a USB drive where it's, uh, it's merely memory locations. But in the end, those memory locations have a sequential address. And it's just like taking uh, some string and unwinding it from a spool. And all those data files and all of the slack and all of the data that make up the metadata all get strung out one sector at a time. And so the forensic image file just takes sector one and copy sector one, sector two, copy sector two, cop sector three, copy sector three, and so forth, and just strings these together. Obviously, if it's using compression or some of the other uh, techniques, uh, it may not be uh, entirely sequential, but the way uh, uh, we do flat file images, uh, it copies it over that way. And so as a result, we are copying the metadata, the data, and the slack, and even the data that's in unallocated space, because if we're doing uh, a full logical uh, uh, image, we get all the data that's within the space reserved for the logical partition. And if we're doing a physical partition, we look at and acquire every single byte that makes up that physical partition as well. The different image types you can see on the left that the flat or raw file which is created by programs like DD or the uh, defense uh, version of a DCFL DD or there's an old uh, DOS program called raw write uh, and what it does is it just collects all those in sequence as you see below and you can do a hash of the raw file and the original uh, media and they will be identical because you're reading exactly the same data in exactly the same order and you're reading all of the data. Whereas the proprietary case, we see here that, that sectors one through four are put together and compressed and then they do a check on it. Typically they will do a hash uh, or some sort of a, uh, a checksum uh, in order to verify that the write has been correct for uh, the sectors one through four, 
so that you can independently, if even if the rest of the drive is destroyed, you can still use sectors one through four, and then they do the same thing for five through seven, etc. And these are normally produced by uh, proprietary programs such as NCASE or FTK or ProDiscover. Some of those will also allow you to do flat files as well, such as ProDiscover, but uh, they will uh, utilize a lot less storage space uh, in the uh, compressed version and there's a little bit more security in terms of knowing that the data is not going to be lost if something happens to part of the media. The downside is you cannot do a hash of the compressed files because they contain different data than the original media. As you can see from the diagram, they not only include the original data in a compressed form, but they also have additional data in the form of the checksums or hashes that are used to uh, uh, verify the individual uh, compressed uh, sets of data. So. It's important for us to know that forensic images are also known as forensic duplicates or bitstream copies. Imaging software can copy logical or physical drives. You need to know which you're doing. And image files contain all of the data in the logical or physical drive that you're copying. And hashes of proprietary or compressed images must be checked with the proprietary software because they contain additional data that will be misread by uh, hash programs that only read raw data. So that's the quick and dirty on uh, forensic images. Until next time, have a good day.